Hi, Moses Lotus. Uh, answering a question for DJ Devise on the doctrine of monergism. Um, particular question on John 1, uh, verses 12 through 13. Um, for people who don't know, monergism is the belief that there is one energy um, at work in regeneration. Uh, mono, um, uh, one, uh, ergo, uh, energy. Okay. Um, monergism is something that is basically uh, specific only to Calvinism for the most part. Um, the belief is basically, uh, as was stated correctly, uh, by D.J. Devise, uh, that God alone is the one who regenerates apart from the cooperative uh, will of man uh, versus synergism, which would be uh, two or more energies at work, namely uh, um, God's, let's say, willingness uh, to regenerate and man's will uh, to choose to be regenerated. When those two things come together, then that results in regeneration. That would be the view called synergism. Uh, let me just say to D.J. Devise that I do appreciate um, your efforts to look to the text um, uh, to derive your doctrine from rather than uh, just simply taking it at face value from a tradition trying to read it, uh, uh, into that. That's very important um, to do a, a, and certainly an effort that I, I definitely commend um, as we all need to do that so that we ourselves don't become stuck to tradition but that we are rooted and grounded in scripture uh, always passing on the truths from scripture to each generation. And so, um, as best as I can, I want to help you out uh, in understanding John 1.12 and seeing uh, that monergism does still stand uh, from that text, even though the, uh, uh, the way it appears to some people. Now, let me just say uh, that Calvinists have, uh, have said that Arminians do tend to quote that uh, as a text for proving against monergism. Um, in fact, this is a, a book called Saved by Grace by Anthony Hokema. Uh, and he even says here, this is page 96, he says that Arminian theologians uh, often quote verse 12 to prove that faith must precede regeneration. Um, uh, Dr. Geisler in his book, Chosen But Free, in fact uses that as one of his proof texts against uh, the Reformed doctrine uh, of monergism. Uh, Dr. White answers back uh, beautifully in, in his work, The Potter's Freedom. Um, a defense of the Reformation and rebuttal of Norman Geiser's chosen but free. All right, well, let's let's get to the text. Okay, so what are we reading here? In, in the prologue, we're reading that, uh, I'll start off from verse 9, that Jesus Christ, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. In the prologue here, obviously, John is writing several uh, several decades um, after Jesus Christ uh, has come, uh, uh, has experienced his death, and uh, and has resurrected and ascended into heaven. And so he's kind of reflecting here, you know, that uh, he came into the world, uh, he came to his own people, which were the Jews, but his own people did not even receive him. And um, if we kind of stop reading there, that would be really sad. You know, Jesus Christ, the creator of the world, came into his own world, and his own people didn't even receive him. And it goes on to verse 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, and the ones receiving, uh, how they received him is through faith. They believed in his name. That is the act that's going on there. He gave them the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Okay, so... Most people will say, uh, or the Arminians will say, that they had to receive him as an act of free will. The text doesn't say any of that at all in the first place. It simply says that the ones received him, again contrasting with the ones who didn't receive him, the ones that received became children of God. The ones who didn't receive him did not become uh, children of God. They were left out. Uh, the way that they received him was through faith. Now. Verse 13 really is what secures the monergism here. Verse 13 is a description of the ones who received. How did they receive? Did they receive a, as an activity that came from them? No, verse 13 is going to refute that. Um, they were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And what I think really uh, helps to illustrate that is uh, when we look into the Greek, 
Um, I hope this doesn't get too complicated. Okay. Um, the word for received is elibon. Uh, elibon. Okay. Forgive my pronunciations. Okay. That's basically what's translated as uh, as the ones who received. Okay. This is an aorist active verb. Okay. Uh, it's indicative. That's not really too relevant to what I'm going to point out, but. Um, it's active because the people, uh, uh, the subjects are the ones who are doing the action. That is, the people are the ones that are receiving. That's something that's active on their part. Um, and nothing about that goes against uh, Calvinism or against monergism. Calvinism does teach uh, that when man is regenerated by the work of, or the energy of God alone, basically, um, it is really man who places their faith. Okay, it's not God placing are not God believing through them, but it really is man who's regenerated so that they can believe. The significance of this also being active is that it's, uh, it, ta it takes place, uh, it's something that took place in their past, it's the way, uh, the way John is describing it, but it was something that, that they had an active role in, and this is consistent with the way John uses faith. He's always describing people, uh, like in John 3.16, as uh, uh, apostle peace day, and all the ones believing, and believing is... Uh, is something that they were actively doing. Believing is not something, uh, or saving faith is not something that you do one time and that's it. It's something, it, it's continuous in the life of the Christian. Faith is an ongoing activity in the life of the Christian. So that's kind of what's going on here. The ones who are receiving, that is, they kept on believing um, in Jesus Christ. These were the ones who had the power or were given the right, rather, to become sons of God. Okay, now, the verb that is translated uh, as were born is egenethesan. Okay, there it is. This is an aorist passive. Now, the significance of this being passive, this is really where we see monergism stated again, is that the subjects, that is, the, the people who received, okay, uh, they are passive when they're born. They have nothing to do that brings about their new birth. They are completely passive. They are, uh, there's an outside power that has worked upon them. Okay, and the same thing holds, I guess, if we can kind of look at it today. A baby doesn't, quote-unquote, choose um, when they are born, where they're conceived. Something like that. It's something that the parents do. And that's, a, that's, the, that's the act there. They're completely passive um, in that choice or, or in that energy. So, again... Monergism is secured right here because they were born. They were born, uh, and that's passive. They were passive in that new birth. So we needn't fear that. Well, it sounds like this. It only sounds like because some people think that received, therefore, implies well, if they had to receive him, that they had to make uh, a free will choice. There's nothing about that at all. Again, if you look in the text uh, in one twelve. Uh, to all who did receive him, who believed on his name. Again, who believed, that's the description of how they received. Okay? They received him by believing in his name. Okay? And then again, describing, well, who are the ones who, who could receive him? Verse 13, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I think the important thing here is to remember that verse 13 is a description of the ones who received and it's uh, the text isn't trying to teach an order that you received in order to be born that's probably uh, one of the biggest things that throws people off i guess with that is that they try to look at it only uh in a chronological type of fashion but clearly verse 13 is a description of the ones who are receiving and not so much placing an emphasis on the order um, Hope that answers the question. I think that is pretty clear, and I think it is safe to say that monergism is still secure uh, from this text. Um, as we can see, God alone is the only one that is acting uh, in giving birth, basically, in, in bringing us forth out of His uh, uh, out of His good pleasure and His good will. And I believe uh, we can still see that in James one eighteen. I believe is the text. Let me find James here. There we go. Yes, here we go. We still see it here. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Again, of his own will. So the Bible is very consistent uh, that God alone is the one who regenerates apart from uh, our will and our activity uh, in that. Thanks.
Yeah.